In the last video, we discussed how the great Egyptian pyramid were probably built. We saw what might be considered as three phases of building a pyramid. This topic alone is a bit complex and scientists and researchers keep searching for answers about this pyramid. Since some of the stones which were used to build the pyramid were so huge, weighing 2.5 tons, which is almost the weight of an adult female elephant, people are now asking, how was it possible for these huge stones to be moved across the desert to the construction site? Without the use of any mechanical assistance which were not available back then, not even Kame or 100 men could move these stones. It is believed that Egyptians used wooden sledge to move the stones, but not much were discussed about how they managed to overcome the problem of friction when using this sledge. After more research was done by scientists, it was said that they most likely wet the sand on the desert before moving the stones. In Egypt, archaeologists were able to dig and discover what is considered by some to be one of the greatest discoveries in Egypt in the 21st century. They discovered an old papyrus which is called the Diary of Mira. Mira was an official said to be involved in the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. After carbonating, it was found that this papyrus was 4,500 years old. This papyrus describes how wooden boats and ingenious systems of waterworks transported blocks of limestones and granite weighing up to 15 tons from 13 kilometers away. In this papyrus, Mira described how he and a crew of 40 elite workmen shipped the stones downstream from Tura to Giza along the Nile River. And the evidence to the conclusion that the Egyptians used water is because of a war painting which was found a century ago in the tomb of G2 Hotel, who was an ancient Egyptian nomad in around 1900 BC. This painting appears to show a person standing at the front of a massive sledge pouring water on the sand just in front of the progressing sledge. Now, to fully understand this, researchers conducted an experiment. They constructed a small sledge which looked like that of the ancient Egyptians and experimented with pulling heavy objects through trays of sand. When the researchers dragged the sledge over dry sand, they noticed clumps would begin to build up in front of the machine, which would then require more force to pull them across. According to the researchers, adding water to the sand increased its stiffness and the sledge were able to glide more easily across the surface. This is because droplets of water create bridges between the grains of sand which help them to stick together. And it is also the same reason why using wet sand to build a sand castle is easier than using dry sand. Every summer, when the night flooded, giant dikes were opened in order to divert water from the river and channel it to the pyramid through a man-made canal system, creating an inland port which then allow boats to dock very close to the work site. And the construction of artificial ports was a huge turning point for the Egyptians, which then opened up trade and new relationship with people from distant lands. The limestone was carried along the river Nile in wooden boats built with planks and rope, which were capable of moving two and a half ton stones. Using ancient tomb carving and the remains of an ancient dismantled ship as a guide, archaeologist Mohammed El Magid recreated an ancient Egyptian boat from scratch. A 3D scan of the ship planks revealed that the boats were full of holes that lined up perfectly with each other. Instead of nails or wood pegs, these boats were sewn together with rope like a giant jigsaw puzzle. With 1,000 oars and 5 kilometers of rope, the new boat was assembled. And Emma Gide, trying to know the secrets of how these stones were moved, 
attempts to recreate every step of mirror journey down the Nile with a two-ton limestone rock. These boats were rowed carefully with the current down the Nile to the work site. Once the rocks were unloaded, wind helped prepare the vessel back to the quarry. And after this experiment, researchers are now saying maybe this is how the Egyptians were able to move the huge stones across the desert to the construction sites. If you have any opinion on this, how do you think the ancient Egyptians were able to move the huge stones weighing 2.5 tons across the desert? Then you can let us know in the comment section below this video. Don't forget to click the like button to like this video and also you can click the red subscribe button to subscribe to this channel in no tutorial to get more construction videos like this. And with that being said, you all have a good and a wonderful day. God bless you all. Bye-bye.